community, it's Sonia, your health promotion coordinator, and we're back today to make fruit salad. I don't know about you, but this warm weather makes me want to enjoy lighter things, get more fruit into my diet, especially fruit that may not be in season during the winter, so I won't be able to find it as abundantly in the grocery stores. So we're going to go ahead. It's a very simple dish. It doesn't take a lot of time. Um, probably the most time consuming part of this is cutting the cutting the pineapple and I'll go ahead and show you how I cut my pineapple. So before we start actually making the fruit salad, I'm gonna take you through our ingredients. Some of the ingredients I've already prepped, others I need to. Um, the one thing I'm gonna start off by saying is whenever you're dealing with fresh produce, um, especially fresh produce where you go ahead and you eat the skin, please wash it. So I'm not washing the pineapple and I don't need to wash the orange because I won't actually eat the the rind and with the pineapple I won't eat the outside but um, with everything else I'm washing it. So I start off by washing a six ounce container of raspberries and then another six ounce container of blackberries and those are in the bowl ready to go. I have my pint of blueberries I need to go ahead and wash those. Um, then I have my container of strawberries again I have to wash that. Um, Right here, I have a peach. I'm using a white peach just because when I went to the grocery store, they were the ones that were riper that looked better. Um, but if you want to use a traditional peach, go for it. That's completely fine. It's, it's your preference. It's your fruit salad. Make it your own. And then I'm also using a nectarine. Um, so again, these two I'm going to have to wash just because I'm not going to peel the skin. That's where most of the fiber is located. So I really want to get that in my fruit salad. Um, the pineapple... So here it is in all its glory, one large pineapple or one regular sized pineapple, I guess. Um, a lot of people feel intimidated when they buy pineapple or so they don't buy a whole one. They buy the ones that are already pre-cut, pre-packaged. But I'll go ahead and show you how I cut it. And then the orange. I am actually going to take the orange and use it more for its juice. Um, and so when you are dealing with fruit, especially fruit that's going to get cut, like your nectarine and your peach, um, it might begin to, to look a little brown. The, the, Acidity from the orange is actually going to help retain um, the consistency. It's going to help prevent the browning right away from oxidation. So I just use the juice and it kind of makes for a nice little dressing. Um, if you feel like your orange is not sweet enough and you feel like your other berries might kind of be lacking in the sweetness department, you can add a little bit, like no more than a tablespoon of honey to it and kind of mix that together with your orange juice. But that's really if you feel like it's not sweet enough for you. So, okay, so when dealing with food, whether you're handling it, prepping it, eating it, whatever, um, you're going to want to make sure that you wash your hands. You want to wash them for a minimum of 20 seconds. This is per CDC guidelines. Make sure that you get around your wrists, in between your fingers, and underneath your fingernails. Um, you want to use warm soapy water, nothing too hot. We don't want to burn our hands, but you also don't want it to be cold. That kind of defeats the purpose. And then make sure that you are using soap. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And then I'll meet you back here um, as we're ready to start prepping things. One thing I should have noted, which I did tell you earlier while I was going through the ingredients, is make sure to wash everything. So as I wash my hands, I'm going to go ahead and then just start washing my produce as well. So I won't show you the process of washing produce but just know that you should wash your own produce before using it okay so now that I've washed all of my produce I'm gonna go ahead and start off by placing them in a bowl I will be using a mid-sized bowl so I just have like a medium-sized mixing bowl the one thing that you'll notice if you followed any of my other recipes I tend to make food that will last me basically the whole week fruit salad um, is probably won't last as long like it's enough to eat if you're bringing it um, to, a, to a gathering, which right now we shouldn't really be having gatherings just due to COVID. But um, if you were to have like a barbecue or something where more than one person's eating it, then yeah, like a lot is, is good because it serves a lot of people. But if you're just one person that's eating it on your own, you don't want it to last the whole, whole week just because then at that point, a lot of the fruit's going to begin to get kind of mushy. Um, it might even begin to go 
kind of bad. So this one, this meal, or I guess this dish that we're making is going to seem a little bit smaller. I'm not going to tell you that it serves like six people. All right. So to start off with, I have washed my blueberries. I put them in a bowl. I'm just going to dump them in here. Um, and then I always fish through just because some of the blueberries still have their stems on them. And so if you see any blueberries like that, you just want to take it off. It's not the end of the world if they get left on there, but you really don't want people to be eating that or yourself to be eating the stem. So I kind of sifted through when I was initially rinsing them, but every... Every so often you just miss a few. So do one final, final check. All right. Oh, there's one more. All right, so our blueberries are in the bowl. And then I mentioned that I had washed the strawberry or the raspberries and blackberries. And so these again, I don't need to cut these. I'm just gonna stick those in here and then Kind of whatever you want, you can begin tossing it. For now, this is pretty good. I'll toss it as I get a few more fruit items in here. Okay, so before we continue um, prepping the rest of the salad, I do wanna go ahead and run through some of the nutrition with what we already have. So blueberries, blueberries are probably the king of antioxidants. Um, they're nice, deep blue color. Um, it helps reduce like inflammation it's good for heart health they just you hit the jackpot when you eat blueberries um blackberries and raspberries are actually both very high in vitamin c actually about one cup of blackberries has like around 30 milligrams of vitamin c in it which is pretty high um compared to some other fruits and food groups in general all fruit in general is very high in fiber and that's partially why later on you'll see that I'm using um, the whole nectarine and the whole peach. I'm not peeling it because again, that's just extra fiber added bulk um, that I want to get in our diet. And so then one of the other reasons I chose to make fruit salad um, overall in general, including all of the fruit that we're going to use, is because the average American falls short of getting their recommended um, fruits and vegetables per day. And so with fruit in particular, it's good to get about two cups of um, fruit per day. So this fruit salad, one serving, would be the equivalent of a brown one cup. If you have a little bit more, you're probably at like that one and a half, two cup mark. Um, and so it's just very well rounded. The different colors all have different vitamins to them um, and just help boost immunity overall. Okay, so I'm gonna start by prepping our nectarine. Um, a lot of people always wonder what the difference between a nectarine and a peach is. Well, they actually are related. A nectarine is a fuzzyless peach. Um, so the skin is more smooth. You don't feel the, basically the peach fuzz on it. Um, they are primarily grown during the summer months. So that's when you're going to see them in season. A shopping tip. When I go shopping, I like to look for nectarines that are darker red in color. Um, don't have as much of the yellowing on them. I just think that those tend to be sweeter. And then it's always ideal if they have a little bit of give, you don't want them to be so hard that like if you got hit in the head, you'd end up with a concussion, but um, you also don't want them to be mushy. So just a little bit of give. So to start off, I am just gonna cut it down the middle. And then there is a pit in nectarines. And so we'll, we will wanna remove that. Um, Nectarines are also just fun to have as a snack, like in general, um, you know, you can pack them whole in your, in your lunch. Let's see if we can, sometimes it, it comes right off the pit. Other times the pit really clings. All right. This one's really, really clinging. If you find that your nectarine is not coming off as nicely as you would like, I would recommend actually just beginning to kind of slice. And the nice thing is that we already cut it around in half once. So you kind of already have these perfect little pieces that you can begin adding into your fruit salad.
All right, these pieces that are a little bigger, you're just gonna wanna then cut in half again. So you're gonna quarter them. So this would be the size, almost like a wedge. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and continue um, cutting this and then I'll be back once we're done and we're ready to start the peach. All right, so we're back with our peach. Again, I mentioned I'm using a white peach, so I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of slice around again, remove the little stem if there is one. Peaches do tend to come out nicely and the, the pit just kind of pulls out, which, which is nice. All right, so then from here, I'm just gonna flip it over and I'll work with one half at a time. Um, I'll kind of cut it as if I were to cut an onion, so make wedges and then cut those wedges maybe like four times, three to four times, depending on the size of the peach. So again, peaches like nectarines, you wanna make sure that they don't have any major bruises on them. Um, for anyone that's wondering, this is what the inside of a white peach looks like. It's really personal preference how you decide to make it or what kind of peach you decide to use. Um, so peaches and nectarines, as I mentioned, they are related. It's just a nectarine doesn't have the fuzz. Um, peaches here in the U.S., Georgia is known as the peach state because they produce a large um, amount of the peaches that we consume. So basically anywhere you are in the U.S., you're probably going to be getting a Georgia peach. Um, so the peach state. But peaches are kind of packed full of nutrients. They are, again, very much a, a summer type fruit. So when you do find them, be sure to stock up. They're rich in antioxidants. They help in digestion. They aid in heart health. Um, they're just full of good nutrients for you. And I really like peaches because I think they're nice and sweet. Um, and so sometimes in the summer, if you're ever craving something a little sweet, a peach is a great option to have. Um, it's a nice healthy option to incorporate into your diet. One thing to note about this fruit salad that we're making is that if you feel like you made a little bit too much, all of the fruit can then actually be stuck in the freezer and you can put it in a smoothie later on. So it does transfer well if you begin to get kind of sick of eating fruit salad, you can make a smoothie out of it. Um, when you are buying peaches and nectarines, you do want to make sure that you store them in the fridge. They should be kept in a very cool um, environment. So I know I talk about keeping like your onions and your garlic when we're using those types of ingredients in a cool, dark, like dry place. And a lot of people have root cellars, but with fruit, I really recommend keeping them in the fridge. It also just helps prevent like bugs from coming and gathering in that area. So the cool place like the fridge is the best place to store your fruit. Okay, so next we're gonna start off by chopping our strawberries. Um, I always remove the, leaf part and just put that over the side to get tossed. And then I'll kind of cut a V in here to remove that top, like the stem piece and put that over the side. And then I'll just slice my, my strawberries like this. Um, so they're really no bigger than a fourth of an inch. They're actually probably smaller than that. And then you can go ahead and throw those into your bowl. Um, if you end up feeling like you have too many strawberries and you don't want to use them all, you can add these obviously to a smoothie like I mentioned earlier. Or if you remember from our overnight oats video, you can use them to top your overnight oats. Um, so when you're buying a container of strawberries, you really want to make sure that they have a nice vibrant red color. Those are going to be your sweeter strawberries. Um, obviously when you are buying them in the container, they might sneak in some not so red looking ones. And at that point, there's really not much you can do about it. The nice thing about eating them in fruit salad is that they're going to kind of blend with all the other flavors. So it's not like you'll be sitting there puckering at an, at a sour strawberry. 
Um, when you're purchasing strawberries too, another trick that I actually learned is in order to know if the strawberries, like all of the strawberries in the container are good, shake the container and if they stick together that means that there's actually mold in the container but if they all kind of shake and um, move around that means that they're good they're fresh um, there's no moldy ones in there so those are just some shopping tips no one wants to be buying rotten produce and it saves another trip back to the grocery store just the hassle of it all all right, so as we're chopping these up, we're just adding them into our bowl with the rest of the fruit salad. Um, and I always joke, you know, strawberries are good for heart health because they kind of look like a heart, see? So um, just another way to remind yourself that they're good for, for helping prevent different forms of heart disease. All right. So I'm gonna go ahead and keep cutting these and adding them into our bowl, and then I'll be back when it's time to chop the pineapple. All right, so we're gonna start now and um, begin cutting our pineapple and prepping it. So one thing to know when you're in the store, if you're wondering whether or not you have a fresh pineapple, actually smelling the pineapple is a good tip. If it's nice and sweet, you have that sweet aroma coming from it. It's ripe, it's ready to go, buy it. Um, if it doesn't put it back, it's not one that you want to purchase. So we're going to start off. I'm going to slice off the top, slice off the bottom, and that will give me a nice base for it to stand on. And then I'll slice it in half and work from there. All right. So here we are. I am going to start slicing it. Ooh, this is, this is definitely an arm workout. All right, I clearly, I did not cut evenly around it. You can kind of see, but that's all right. This, that's the best we're gonna get right now. And then I'm gonna cut off the bottom too. This pineapple's juicy. I'm like squirting pineapple juice everywhere. All right, so now that this is cut, I'm gonna go ahead and stand it. We're actually gonna remove the core there later on when we stand it up so it, it works out. All right, and then we're just gonna go ahead and cut our pineapple down the middle. Again, this isn't even either. <laughs> All right. So now we technically have two pineapple halves. I'm gonna put one over to the side to work with later. Um, if you don't eat all the pineapple in one sitting, that's okay. You can store pineapple in an airtight container for up to a week in the fridge. So um, if you sit here and you might either get tired of cutting the fresh pineapple or you might be like, wow, that's a lot. I don't need all of that in my fruit salad. You can store the rest for up to a week in the container. All right, so to start off, you're not really able to completely see it, but there is a core to the pineapple and we saw the bottom of it on this piece right here. So an easy method to go ahead and remove that is to kind of cut like two triangles in the middle here and then that just pops out um it's not that the core isn't edible it's just a not as sweet um and it requires a lot more chewing and so it does kind of just pop itself out so there's the core and then when you're looking at the pineapple, these are all the little eyes. Look at the juice dripping off my pineapple. This is not, <laughs> this is definitely a little more messy than the rest of the fruit salad. 
So these are all the eyes and you can kind of see the eye in there. When you are cutting the pineapple, you want to remove as many of the eyes as possible. And so I'm just going to go ahead and begin kind of trying to cut it and peel it out from the rind or the skin. And you might have to section this. You want to be careful. You don't want to end up cutting yourself. All right, and so you can actually just kind of pop it off. And see, like there's an eye there, you just, and this has a few eyes, you can just kind of pull them off and remove them. And then we'll go ahead and chop these into finer bite-sized pieces like, like this and go ahead and add it into our bowl. So a few facts about pineapple. One, um, there is something found in pineapples called bromelain. It's, if I remember correctly, B-R-O-M-E-L-A-I-N. Um, and it's actually known for being a tenderizer. So if you ever buy, um, meat tenderizer it actually is just bromelain and it's an enzyme found in pineapples um so pineapple juice will also do the trick of tenderizing meat um and then it's full of antioxidants um it actually has immune fighting proper or immune boosting properties so disease fighting Okay, so this is what our fruit salad looks like right now. I only went ahead and added half the pineapple in here. Um, you can cut the chunks as big or as small as you'd like, but these were the size that I decided to cut them. And I'm just gonna go ahead and squeeze the juice of an orange over it, um, really just to help prevent the fruit from going brown um, quickly and to add a little bit of like a, almost like a, a fruit dressing. All right, so I just have a regular orange here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and slice it in half. If there's any pits like there are in this one, you're gonna wanna go ahead and remove those. If you, I don't have a juicer, I just use a fork. Um, so that's, uh, that's partially why I'm trying to remove the pits right now. But if you do have um, a juicer, you can, when you like squeeze it on top, the pits tend to fall in there. Not the end of the world. If you get a pit, you'll be able to see it and pull it out. Um, another trick is as you're squeezing it to keep your hand underneath so that way it'll catch any pits that are falling. I'm gonna use a fork to just kind of help me squeeze the juice around. And now my pineapple, I did go ahead as I was um cutting it from the other half i i snagged the bite my pineapple is really sweet so i'm not gonna go ahead and use honey and then even just from the smell of this orange i can tell that it's really sweet too so i really just need the juice of it over the salad um or yeah over the fruit salad i really recommend using a fresh orange that you squeeze so freshly squeezed orange juice um just i think it tastes better and then you'll get a little bit extra fiber and a little less sugar than if you were to buy it from a carton or like a container at the grocery store And then I'm gonna go ahead and do the other half right now. These are juicy oranges as I'm squeezing the orange like the juice is flying. Um, oranges, so citrus fruits in general are always known for their vitamin C, but um, a lot of people don't realize that the citrus fruits, so like your lemons, your limes, your oranges, they can help prevent or slow down the browning process. So, you know, when you see apples that are cut, 
If you cut them in the morning and take them to lunch with you, you might notice that they've gone brown and that's just like the fact that oxygen has hit them. Um, but if you squeeze a little bit of orange juice or lemon or lime juice on it, it'll actually help prevent the browning. So it really is like very much an appearance thing. All right, so here's our final product. I've even put it in a little container that I can take to work with me and have with my lunch. So again, recap, we have blueberries, blackberries, raspberries, a white peach, you can use whatever peach you want, a nectarine, pineapple, and then, um, did I mention strawberries? We have the strawberries too. And then the juice of one orange. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and that you get to make some fruit salad of your own. Let us know how you make it. Do you add in other fruits? For example, grapes, those would be a good option if you find them. Or do you use regular peaches instead of white peaches? However you make your fruit salad, let us know. Be sure to tag us at UND Wellness to be featured in one of our stories. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Bye.